Hey what's up everyone, today we're going to learn how to send emails using Golang with PocketBase. The tools and concepts that we're going to use today are the following. So PocketBase, which is a backend as a service open source project. And another thing we're going to use is the SMTP or the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. An overview of this tutorial would be that we're going to learn what is SMTP and why we actually use it. Then we're going to set up our Gmail SMTP. Then we're going to go ahead and initialize PocketBase and set up this amazing backend server. So we're going to do that in Rublet. And then after or after that done, we're going to use our custom email address as a sender. So instead of gmail.com, we're going to use our custom from any provider that you have. We'll cover Hostinger. And the last step would be sending emails with custom logics. Why are we using the SMTP? Well, it's the standard method and here are some of the reasons that why we use it. It works by the following. So there's a server that will receive the request, process it, send it to another server and that server will actually send it to the user or the rece receiver. We're interested in extent of with Go. So we're going to go to this extend with Go documentation. As we can see, we have this code. We're going to copy this code simply and go to Rublet. Now Rublet is a place where you can create projects and you know simple projects for tutorials and such and you can learn while doing that and also it's it's a pre-set up environment for coding so you don't have to set up anything you know simple things but you just have to write the code so you don't have to set up an environment in code editor and all of that it's already pre-done for you um, and this way out I, I thought that would be great so everyone could start f from the same point right so we're going to uh, create a new project. We're going to call it Hello World, for example. In this project, we're going to copy this code and actually paste it in that project. So inside our main Docker, we're going to paste the code that we copied from the documentation. All right. Now, the first step would be to create or follow this step, right? So the second step is to initialize the module. Now, in this case, in Rublet, it's already pre-done that. So we can go ahead and go mode tidy so we can actually install our packages right so after that it would be installing our packages one by one after we're done we're going to go ahead and learn how to run the app or run pocket base all right so after installing the packages we're going to go ahead and run our main.go serve this command will run the pocket base server inside our replet and obviously it wouldn't run right away so we need to do something we are in the Replit environment. So we need to get the URL that the, the Replit is hosting on and we need to forward the server of Replit to uh, a port that actually Replit supports. So to do that, we go to this, you open up a new tab from this uh, bar. So we're gonna look for web view like this. We open it. Now it tells you that no server is currently running. Now this might take a few minutes because we're using Replit and Replit has limited CPU on the free plan. All right, so after the server starts, you can see this um, localhost API or like the URL. Now, obviously, we're not going to open up this because we're not running it locally. We're running it on Replit. To view it, we're going to go ahead into the networking tool. And then we can see that we have a localhost port now, now is running. We can set the external port to view it in our web view. And to do that, we're going to just choose um, any of this. For example, this one would be, would be good. All right. So under the web view, now it shows us this page. We can go ahead, underscore, and then forward slash. Now, first time you open up the admin UI, it might ask you to create a login and password. If it does not, we're going to go back to our shell. We're going to close the shell, stop running the program by pressing Ctrl and C. And then we're going to clear our terminal, run this command. So go run main.go and then we, we use the command admin and then we create. So admin create, these are two commands, a command and subcommand. We give it the email and the password for our admin UI. So we're going to go ahead and say, for example, test at example.com and the password would be anything. We're going to see that it would actually, the CLI of uh, pocket base, create a new admin. Then we can run our app simply by running the command serve. All right, now in our web view, if we go back to our admin UI, which is underscore slash, right? We can now log in with our test at example email. Now, after we log in, we can see that beautiful 
admin UI that we have right here. What we are interested in is the settings. So in under settings, in mail settings, so we're gonna use SMTP as I mentioned. And the SMTP that we're gonna use is Gmail SMTP. Now, obviously, if you wanna use the Gmail SMTP, you're gonna use this host right there. So we're gonna go ahead and paste it here. The port is the same port. The username is your Gmail name. So the email that you use for Gmail account right here, right? But the password here, we want to get it from our Google account as an app password. So to have an app password, you go to your uh, Google account, you say manage your Google account. In, in your account settings, you search for app password, right? So you just search for app password. If you find this uh, tab that says app password, you're good to go. You can copy it and, and so on. But if you didn't find it, that means your account doesn't have two-step verification. So you need to obviously activate that first. So you go to security and you activate this two-step verification. After you've done that, you can now search about app password and then get the app password right there. So you give it an app name. I've already created this one. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and create a new one, let's say hello world. So this is the app name that you wanna give and you will get the password right away, like this one. You copy this password, you go to your app admin UI and then you paste it right there. And then you go and save changes. After you click save, now you can send email or test email to, your, to any of your account. I'm gonna send it to myself. So I'm gonna use basically the same email here as a receiver. And you can use which template you wanna send. For example, I'm gonna send the password reset template to my email and click send. Now it tells me that it successfully sent the email. So I'm gonna go ahead and check right there. And now I can see that I have sent to myself, which is actually pocket based using my Gmail account, send me this password reset template, all right? Now next, we're gonna go ahead and see how actually are we going to use a custom Gmail or a custom email um, account or custom email address other than our Gmail address. In Hostinger, we have um, these information that we're gonna use. Now, we cannot directly use our uh, Hostinger email as a sender. That's why you, we use Gmail and we're gonna configure Gmail to use this email as the sender. You go to the account that you have your email that you wanna send from. You go to the settings right there, this cog icon, and then you go click on see all settings. Now you have to go into accounts and imports, right? And then you have this send email as. So you click add another email address to add your SMTP server details. You go to your provider and get the details from there. The username is your email and the password is the password of that email. You go to your email provider and you open up your email, you're gonna see this confirmation code sent to your email. You're gonna go ahead and click this URL to confirm and you click confirm. Let's see if it's actually verified. So we go back to our settings, we go to the accounts and imports, and as we can see that now it is verified, right? So it's now could use this one. Obviously it's not default yet, so we're gonna click make default. So now, the default is the support at more.co.com. So if we now go back to our replet server and send another email, now we should see that the sender is the new account. So we go back to the Gmail, right? And then we're gonna see that actually it says support and, and it's actually using the custom new address that we have added. So this is how you add a custom address as your Gmail sender. And now you can send via Gmail to any account with your custom address. Now we can add some logic. So what we do, we go under extend with code tab and under sending emails. You can see this page or this documentation. Here we can see that they uses some mailer package under tools under bucket base. And this mailer package is a simple package that you can use to send emails, whatever you want from your app. In this case, we're sending emails from on record after create. So after we create a new user, we can send him a welcome message or a verify message as we want, right? So we're gonna copy this code, this hook code, and then we're gonna go in our replet here. This would actually create our message after we create a new user in the user's table. We're gonna create a new message. We're gonna um, give it the addresses that it needs. So we're gonna say that the sender is this sender and the name is that. So the address of the sender, the two variable, which is a slice of 
mail addresses so you can send it to multiple users or one user and you give it the sender address in this case it comes from the record so the new record that's cr just created and the email of that record right here you can say the subject that you want so for example hello or let's say welcome and here you add your HTML body so whatever um, email you want to send for example in this case I'm gonna send a simple h1 tag obviously you need to import a few things we need to import the mail package and the mailer as it states here so the mail package comes from the standard nets mail and the mailer comes from pocket base under tools right I'm gonna save this so after saving we're gonna go back to our shell and restart our program we're gonna rerun the project again and go back to our web view in our web view, we obviously go back to our admin UI, so under underscore. Then we go to the collection tab, so this one. And under the user's collection, we're going to create a new user. Now, obviously, whenever we create a new user, an email should be sent to that user. All right, so to create a new user, we, I'm going to give it the same email address just to check and test. Right, I'm gonna give it a password, simple password here. And then we're gonna click verify. Now obviously this verification, you would in a real app do it as a button. So probably in your email after you, a user is created by the app logic, you're gonna send a, a confirmation email and send a button that then would send a request and uh, change this value, All right? So this becomes verified. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna click verified, right? I'm gonna name this user, for example, Hall. Now we're gonna click create. After creation, an email should be sent to this address, right? So we're gonna check our Gmail and exactly, we have an email sent with the email that we stated as hello world, as an H1 tag, just like we stated right here. So this includes how to send emails using Golang and Pocketbase. Every app would at some point need an email service. So to have a free email service that is fast and reliable, it's pretty good. And I have myself go through a lot of email providers and SMTP host servers to actually find this method. And this method is very effective. It works perfectly fine and uses Gmail as its SMTP, which is pretty fast and reliable. So thanks guys for watching this video and if you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials. Peace.